Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-
Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterwards receive me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? Who is there in heaven but you, God? And afterwards receive me to glory. And there is none upon the earth that I desire besides thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they are far from thee shall perish. They that are far from thee shall perish. Anybody that's not close to God will perish. Thou hast destroyed all that go a-whoring from thee. Go looking to other deities for some sort of guidance. God is the only God. He will destroy you for going the other way. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. O oh God, why hast thou cast us off forever? Why doth thine anger smoke against the sheep of thy pasture? See, David doesn't understand all of this. He's in that time. He doesn't know what everybody has done over the generations. Remember thy congregation which thou hast purchased of old, the rod of thine inheritance. That would be the line of Abraham. <coughs> which thou hast redeemed this Mount Zion wherein thou hast dwelt. Lift up thy feet unto the perpetual desolations. Even all that the enemy hath done wickedly in the sanctuary. They've even went into God's house and destroyed it and put graffiti up and brought in false gods into the temple of God and things like that. Any of them calves red there, Cole Creek Croft? You can make some good money with them red heifers. I wouldn't sell them, though, if I were you. But They seem to be in demand in certain parts of the world right now. That is a warning, by the way. Pay attention to Israel. Pay attention to why things are happening there the way they're happening there. And understand that they have the red heifers to begin the sacrifice with all over again. And they have successfully finished the build of the altar on top of the Mount of Olives. It's there. It's ready to go. They can start any day, and this would be the time they would start during Passover. Keep your eyes on Israel. Things are coming to a head there. And when they do, Armageddon is next after that. And when that happens, the next thing to come would be the return of Christ after a short period of Antichrist type stuff. So, buckle your seatbelts. It's happening. Thine enemies roar in the midst of thy congregations. They set up their ensigns for signs. An ensign is like a flag with a symbol on it, or a ring with a symbol on it. In this case, it's a flag. And that ensign is like, say, it's the lion holding a pear tree in its mouth. Whatever. I don't know what it is. But that's what the symbol would be. And that symbol is the ensign of that army. And that's what that is. We call them flags. They call them ensigns. And they hold them up so that everybody can see the sign of them coming. Well, God holds up signs too like the temple being built on the Mount of Olives. That's a sign. It's in the Bible. You can find that they're going to do it, and they've done it. And there it is. The, once again, this 45-year, 100-year-old document telling future events before they occur. It happens a lot. I'd be very cautious to dismiss this book. A man was famous according as he had lifted up axes upon the thick trees. Big Burly Lumberjack, famous guy. But now they break down the carved work thereof at once with axes and hammers. He was famous. He's no longer famous. 
In other words, people gain favor and they lose favor, but God endures forever. They have cast fire into thy sanctuary. They have defiled by casting down the dwelling place of thy name to the ground. They have destroyed the temple of God all the way to the ground. They said in their hearts, let us destroy them together. They have burned up all the synagogues of God in the land. And we see not our signs. There is no more any prophet. Neither is there among us any that knoweth how long. How long what? How long until the end? O oh God, how long shall the adv adversary reproach? How long shall Satan dwell on this earth? Shall the enemy blaspheme thy name forever? Well, no, God's not going to let that happen. But he is going to do it for a little while. Why is that? Why would God subject himself to that, to that kind of hypocrisy, to that kind of attack? Simply to give you free will so that you can choose to love him properly. That is the reason. Why drawest thou thy hand, even thy right hand? Pluck it out of thy bosom. What he's saying is, why are you not using the strength that you have to save us? You got your hand stuck in your bosom, not doing anything with it. That's what that means. I'm, I'm not working. I'm not touching that. That's what that phrase means. Pluck thy right hand out of thy bosom means get busy and do something to help us. We need you. We're struggling over here. For God is my king of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. Amen. Thou didst divide the sea by thy strength. When the Israelites came out of Egypt, he did divide the Red Sea. Thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the waters. That would be Leviathan, and yes, he did. Thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces and gavest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. Thou didst cleave the fountains and the flood. Thou driest up mighty rivers. The day is thine. The night also is thine. Thou hast prepared the light and the sun. Two different things. Hmm. Thou hast set all the borders of the earth. Thou hast made summer and winter. Remember this, that the enemy hath reproached, O Lord, that the foolish people have blasphemed thy name. O deliver not the soul of thy turtle dove unto the multitude of the wicked. Forgive not the congregation of thy poor forever. Have respect unto the covenant for the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of the cruelty. Well, that is true. The world is full of bad people, bad places, bad intentions. Have respect for the covenant that you made, God. That you made a promise to us. We'll keep our end if you'll keep your end. Some of us will anyway. Some of us will not. Oh, let not the oppressed return ashamed. Let the poor and the needy praise thy name. Arise, O oh God, plead thine own cause. Remember how the foolish man reproacheth thee daily. Come down here and fix it yourself, God. <laughs> Please your own case. Forget not the voice of thine enemies, the tumult of those that rise up against thee increaseth continually. This keep, just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Their uh, anger, their, their uh, plight of hatefulness, their enviousness, and their wickedness just keeps getting worse and worse every year. It just keeps getting worse. Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks. That's twice for emphasis. For that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. Amen. 
When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it. Selah. <coughs> Just think about that for a minute. I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly. And to the wicked, lift not up thine horn. Lift not up your horn on high. Speak not with a stiff neck. For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He putteth down one, he set up, setteth up another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red, and it is full of mixture, and he poureth out of the same. But the dregs thereof, the, the crump, crusty stuff at the bottom, the last swallow, the dregs, all the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink them. That's all they get is the dregs of that wine. They don't get the good wine, the good stuff at the top of the cup, the, the sweet tasting wine. They don't get that. They just get the dregs. That's what I'm trying to tell you. They may be succeeding here on earth, but they're not succeeding in heaven. I guarantee you that. They only get the dregs. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises unto the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. In Judah is God known. His name is great in Israel. Amen. In Salem also is his tabernacle, and his dwelling place is in Zion. Where is Zion? It's inside the city of Jerusalem. <clears throat> there break ye the arrows of the bow, the shield, and the sword, and the battle. Selah. Pause and think about that. And he's going to do it again. Thou art more glorious and excellent than the mountains of prey. The stout-hearted are spoiled. That's the people with a foolish heart. The so full of themselves they can't see the forest for the trees kind of people. Stout-hearted. They have slept their sleep, and none of the men of might have found their hands. They can't even figure out a way to go to war. <laughs> at, thy at thy rebuke, O God of Jacob, both the chariot and the horse are cast into a dead sleep. Thou, even thou, art to be feared, and who may stand in thy sight? When thou art angry, thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still. And when God arose to judgment to save all the meek of the earth, Selah. Who is that and what are we talking about? We're obviously referring back to the flood again. When the floods consumed everything all over the earth, it was quiet. There was not a sound being made because nothing was alive. Everything died. Everything. Except those on the ark. And when God arose from that judgment, he saved the meek or the humble of the earth. Selah. That would be the people on the ark. Surely the wrath of man shall praise thee. The remainder of wrath shalt thou restrain. Vow and Pay unto the Lord your God. Let all that be round about him bring presents unto him that ought to be feared. That's God. <clears throat> he shall cut off the spirit of princes. He is terrible to the kings of earth. I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice. And he gave ear unto me. In the day of my trouble I sought the Lord. And sore ran in the night, and ceased not. My soul refused to be comf comforted. I was not going to go down without a fight, says David. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed, Selah. And that's what we started off talking about, having an overwhelmed spirit, being completely taken aback by the world that has formed around us. Hmm. 
Thou holdest mine eyes waking. You, you, you have me in your hands when I wake up in the morning. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old and the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with mine own heart and my spirit made diligent search. I was looking for you, God. Will the Lord cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Doth his promise fail forevermore? Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Hath he in anger shut up his tender mercies? Selah. Has he? Do you believe that? Do you think that the Lord ain't paying attention no more? He's an absentee landlord. He's just doing his own thing now. He's gave up on the earth. I don't think so. I think he's very much there, and I think that everything that happens on this earth that's bad, it hurts him to his core. But if he intervenes, it's not free will. You have to come to him of your own accord. He cannot save you from yourself. He cannot save you from your surroundings. You have to do that. So if you come to God, I give you my word, he will be there waiting. That's where we're going to stop for today, ladies and gentlemen. We'll pick up tomorrow night, 7710. It seems like Mondays are better. Man, what a fantastic read that was. I hope you guys heard enough of it. I hope it wasn't too buggy and too jerky and too splotchy. Anyway. Please do me a favor while you consider that. Hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon so you get notifications of when I'm going to be online. Smash that like button. It's free. It's effortless. It's right in front of you. And it really does help the channel with the algorithms. Helps us get recommended to other people. Won't you do that, please? Take a moment, if you so choose, and hit that join button down at the bottom there. Join our cause. Become a disciple. Help us get where we're going and help us reach other people. Won't you do that, please? Share this video with somebody you love. Better yet, share it with somebody you don't love. Bring them into the family. Make them part of the fold. Be part of their solutions, not part of their problems. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking about. Question me, curse me, bless me, challenge me, confront me, conform with me, drink my Kool-Aid, make your own Kool-Aid. As long as you're thinking critical, that's what I want. Critical thought coming from that brain of yours. And hey... If you love the Word of God and you can see the value in what I'm trying to build here and you'd like to help out, you'd like to do something special and contribute to the cause, or if you feel led to send your tithes, offerings, or love offerings to this humble channel, you can do so by going to paypal.me slash jakejohnsonband, paypal.me slash jakejohnsonband, or if you're a Cash App user, you can go to dollar sign jakejohnsonband, dollar sign jakejohnsonband, every little bit helps, it's a win-win, it's a blessing to me, but it's a blessing to you too, because God, he notices these things. Now, I will do everything in my power to be worthy of that support. I will answer all of your questions and comments as I always do right now. We seem to be having some issues. Okay, it went away. All right. I thought it wasn't ever going to stop. All right, let me scroll up and see what I missed in the chat. Looks like a lot. We'll start at the uh, super sticker there from April. Thank you, April. Thank you very much for that nine ninety nine and a beautiful little teddy bear saying, good luck. I need all the luck I can get. Thank you very much. April says, heart, you're welcome with lots of these. I got one of those too right there. And Lisa Reen says, you go, girl. And April says, hey, MBTV, good to see you, love. What's been going on? Lisa Reen, how are you tonight? Hun, oh, oh, Lisa Reen, are you off tonight, hun? And Amanda says, here's the Facebook page, Untether Live Facebook page. Here's the link if you want to go check it out. Cold Creek Cross says, light snow, over 200 new calves bouncing around and 75 degrees in two days, so all good. You, April? April says, whoa, that's a lot of snow. Jeez, I'm all right, love. Thanks for asking. I don't think it's snowing. Where'd you get the snow from? I could be wrong. Cole says, two 
of the Longhorns are completely red to me. Mm. I think they have to be heifers. That would be female cows, I think. I don't know much about cows. But yeah. Cole says, but I can't get close enough to check for sure. Come to think of it, I saw a red calf among all the black near Buckshot. Buckshot's place, I should ask. Yeah, it'd be good to know. Be interesting anyway, right? April says, hmm. Well, I see Florida is going to be underwater probably when our grandchildren have children. That's scary. <laughs> They've been saying that for quite a while, April. It hasn't went underwater yet. I don't know why it's going to go underwater anytime soon. But if it does, and if it's a possibility, how come so many rich people keep buying beachfront property right there in Florida? I'm just asking for a friend. I don't know. Lisa Reen says, no work on the weekends for me. At least not work I get paid for. Amen, sister. I hear you. Me too. Lisa Reen says, who's sending out the fear porn about floods, April. That would be the government and the uh, climate change people. They used to call it something else, but they had to change that because it was going the other direction and they didn't like it. That was global warming. They used to call it that, but they don't call it that anymore because the globe ain't warming. So they say. I don't know. YouTube and Google is always right. You should absolutely believe everything they say. April says, I've seen it under Google about climate. See, I told you. I told you. I knew it was coming. Don't you worry, April. Amanda says, yeah, April, where did you hear that? I haven't heard anything about it. Okay. And April says, as I was scrolling down, it was there, and I wasn't looking for it, LOL. Hmm. Funny how that happens, and it? it's almost like propaganda or something. Like they're just shoving things in your brain without your permission. I don't know. Who are they? Roberto the rabbit was feared dead all summer. I just went out to feed Mama Skunk and looked down, and there I think he was. He came to his name and got bread. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus indeed, even for rabbits. And April says, Boah, ha, 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 MBTV. Cole says, I chose to take that as not another sign or touch of God, but rather a whack upside the head. Stunning coincidence. The other rabbits would never come so close. Well, Cole, the Lord does work in mysterious ways, and I will tell you that there is something about animals coming up to you when you're in need or when you're lonely. Because they do to me all the time, and I don't ask for it, and I don't even like them, but there they are. And they keep coming. So, praise God for for loving you. That's all I can tell you. April says, that's a blessing. Oh, so awesome. Amanda says, Cole, how's the iron rat? Hmm, impossible, says Cole, for it to be him. But have seen no rabbits near for the last four months, thinking the cats got them all. Okay, not my show enough, but wow. Hey, it is your show. Sure it is. If you want to talk about rabbits, that's fine with me. I'll find something godly about those rabbits. To retort with, Stephanie Jinx, I think that says Jinx. Yep, Jinx. I am enjoying this channel. Thank you, Stephanie. Why don't you consider subscribing to the channel? And if you're so inclined, join the channel and become a member. You'll get to see things there you'll never see anywhere else on planet Earth. I promise you that. Cole says, the iron rat is fine, but the owner found out and sent me two snap traps to nail him. And since you trained him to eat marshmallows, it should be easy. Did you get that rat? Amanda says, hi, Stephanie. Welcome. St Stephanie says, thank you and hello, Amanda. And April says, probably froze or the cats did get them. 
and they jumped way deep in their rabbit holes. I'd say that's more likely. Rabbits are pretty resilient. They don't just fall over at the sign of a cat. I mean, I've seen a rabbit beat the heck out of a dog. They can do it. They're very fast. They don't generally succumb to attacks, but it has happened. So I'm not discounting it, but I'd say probably he survived. Stephanie says, April, hello, girl, good to see you. Cold Creek Croft says, I'm building two replacement middens, but fencing, screening, taking time may just re relocate him to the loft as the owner can't get up there and Neo is used to the barn. He's twice the size now. Wow, that's a big rat. Amanda says, I'm glad you didn't kill him, Cole. April says, hi, Stephanie. Good to see you, love. Welcome. Amanda says, wow. And Cole says, I could never harm him. I didn't even shoot the rattlesnake, which is what I'm supposed to do, right? What, which I'm supposed to do on sight. Live and let live to me and appreciate their rattle. Babble, continue, Jake. <laughs> I support you in your um, humanity, Cole Creek Croft. I do not condemn anyone who won't shoot an animal. I just think it's a little silly, but I'm a woodsman and I eat animals, so I would think that. <laughs> but I actually think you got a very nice heart for caring for those animals, and, and I'm proud to know you for that. So thank you. Keep it up. April says, but you know, snakes will turn on you, don't you? Don't be a fool, mm, says the girl about snakes. Let's see, who do we know that has a history of listening to snakes and being fooled by them? Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> April says, yes, Jake, amen. Not about that, it's about something I said while I was reading. Cold Creek Girl says, very dangerous, but better than freaking alligators running around loose. That's scarier to me than the biggest grizzly. Alligators are nothing. I used to swim right next to them when I was a kid. Ain't no big deal. I love alligators. I had one as a pet that lived in my bathtub until it was too big, and then it got away, and I don't know where it went. April says, yes, I agree, MVTV. And Amanda said, great read, Jake. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. I hope you got something out of it anyway. I know it was a little splotchy, but I hope it got we got through. Amen to that, Jake, says April. Cold Creek Croft says, good job again, Jake. Happy Easter. Hmm? Thank you, Cold Creek Croft. And Melissa says, it was a great read. Followed in the Bible. Thank you, Melissa. Melissa's my sister, for those of you that don't know. Amanda says, hey, join and get an awesome J tag. That's a nice badge. It's a badge, not a tag, but you can call it whatever you like. And you get one. It's awesome. And it's bright and shiny, and it sets you apart from the rest of the crowd. So you'll be special. And I also look for those tags when I'm reading through the chat to see who I'm going to respond to. Just so you know, a little inside baseball there for you. Come on, Jet. Scroll down. There it goes. I lost my place. Hang on. The chat jumped on me. There we go. I found it. April says, Jake, you always explain it, and you inspire me much love to you immensely. April, much love back to you, honey. I appreciate that you listen so intently, and I love you for it. Thank you. Cold Creek Girl says, but why the J? There's no J in Disciple. And I would think Mr. Jake Johnson would pick something. Oh, wait a minute. Something that would reflect one's ego, maybe. Walter Davis says, good evening all again. Yeah, we, I'm glad you found your way back, Walter. I was worried about that. Hi, April, says Walter. And Amanda says, it was fine till the video. What video? What are you talking about? I disavow. 
What video are we discussing? Amanda says, it's all good now. Cold Creek Croft says, made it back, Walter. April says, I hope everyone had a great weekend and praying for whatever that word is, week ahead. Everyone be safe and remember. Is that Yigdisrael? Are you saying Israel? I don't know what that word is. That, is that something I don't know about? But I'll pray for it if you if you tell me what it is. April says, hit that like button, everybody. Sub, share, support. See you on Monday at 8.30, right here on Untethered Live. Please do come back. Christian Catholic says, John 6.53, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you shall not have life in you. See here the command to eat Christ's flesh fulfilled at the Last Supper in Matthew. What are you trying to say there, Christian? Yes, we know. But that occurred the evening before Passover, which would be tomorrow night. Amanda says, oh, and don't forget to join. Don't just like, subscribe, share, and support, but join. Become one of those disciple-y thingies. What is a disciple, you might ask? It is one who practices a discipline. What discipline? The untethered discipline. What discipline is that? No discipline at all. So there you go. Could be a longhorn heifer or not. Could be a longhorn. Heifers or not. Thank you, Walter. I did not know. I thought longhorns were males. So that shows you. I told you I don't know anything about cattle. April says, getting right with Jesus. That's right. And by the way, Christian, Catholic, that is not a command to eat the flesh of our Father. It is a metaphor. The bread is like unto the flesh of God. He also says that man cannot live by bread alone, right? So is he saying you can't live by only eating bread? Because you can. But your spirit needs to be filled. This is a spiritual matter. It is not a physical one. Anyone with any common sense knows that. And I hope that's not what you were getting at. Because no, he is not telling Christians to practice cannibalism. That is not what that means. But if that's not what you meant, I apologize for keying in on it. But I've heard that argument before and I don't like it. So, Walter Davis says, hi, Christian. And hi, Christian. I don't know if I said that or not. April says, Christian... That's not eating his flesh literally. See, even April understands the, the concept here. <laughs> Walter says, well, John Kerry has a boat. Pretty smart. LOL. About the, uh, yeah. Google's government. LOL. Might as well be. They work for the guys. Clickbait, says Amanda. Could be. Could be clickbait. I'm thinking you're probably right there. Yes, says April. And Walter says, get a Jack Russell, Montana. Get a Jack Russell, Montana. Probably won't catch the rat, but will keep you amused when he tries. That's great advice, Walter. Jack Russell Terriers are great little dogs. If you can stand the little ankle biters. April says, I figured that. I'm that way, too. Mm-hmm. You're beautiful is what you are. Yes, you are. Hmm, says April. Amanda says, the J is his watermarking on his channel, Cole. He knows that. He was being sarcastic. April says, lately... Gators have attacked humans and ate them. Ugh, horrific. Well, that that has happened. It's not likely. There's a reason that that's happening. It's because they've been encroached upon to the point where they have nowhere else to go and they're fighting back. That's my opinion. I mean, when you build enough golf courses on other people's houses, they tend to get angry about it. So I understand that. But a crocodile is what you got to worry about. An alligator won't bite you unless you really get in its face. Most of the time, it'll try to avoid you. <clears throat> I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying most likely 
They don't bother you. I've been in many a swamp with many a gators, and I had nothing on but shorts, no shoes, no shirt, and neck deep in the water, and they didn't bother me at all. So here I am, no no alligator marks. I ain't Amos Moses. And Walter says, if the animals are doing you any no loss, I must have read that wrong. If the animas are doing you any no loss, I leave them alone. If they're not hurting you, if the animals aren't bothering you, leave them alone is what Walter's saying. I agree, Walter, says Amanda. And Amanda says, I like JTAG. Well, that's what they are forever known from now on, JTAG. That's what they are. You get a JTAG. You get a JTAG. And you get a JTAG. Hit that, hit that JTAG button. I like it. It's a good, good name. Go, Amanda. April says, I don't mess with them, but people that don't know takes shouldn't be walking at dawn that usually when the attacks happen. People that don't know about alligators shouldn't be walking around at dawn, but that's usually when it happens. Yes, because they feed and then they hide the food. Mm hmm. April says, when you played your end video, it started buffering again till you stopped it. Yep, I'm not getting very good signal. I bet if I went and did a video, I mean, if I went and did a speed test right now, I bet it would be a very low number. And I don't really know why that is because we're paying for bigger numbers here, but we're not getting them. Typo, sorry, says April. I got you. I understood what you were saying. Cold Creek Cross says, Walter Davis, catching him is not the issue. He comes out to engorge with me, to engage with me, sniffs my shoes as a pack rat, is much furrier and cleaner than old world rats, too friendly, and could not be betray that. Hmm. I could not betray that. They're too friendly. I couldn't betray them. I got it. Yep. It's very nice of a rat to sniff your shoes and be fluffy. Very possible. Supposed to say praying for a great week ahead. Got it. Praying for a great week ahead. Yes, let's have a great week ahead. Let's have a great year ahead. And Walter says, I finished up that F-150 and drove it home about 120 miles yesterday. It has a belt squeaking. Uh, hang on. It has a belt squeaking. I replaced the idle pulleys. Or idle, idler pulls. Still speaking. Still squeaking, but it ran good. Hey, that's fantastic. Time to make some plans, Jake. Yes, sir. You got it. I'm on it. I'll call you tomorrow. As a matter of fact, I'll call you tonight after the show if you're going to be up. Cold Creek Croft says, As I know it, a heifer is a female that has not had a call, right? That may be. Hang on. There we go. A heifer is a female that has not had a call, after which they're called simply cows. I asked Buckshot about it, and each ranch has a dozen bizarre terms, strikers, rooters, bouncers, etc. It's kind of like The Walking Dead. Nobody says the word zombie on TV, but everybody calls them something else, like walkers or floaters or, or uh, stinkers or lurkers or eaters or something like that, but they never say zombie. It's a zombie! Come on, man. Amanda says, put some bar soap on it, Walter. It should stop. Christian Catholic says, John 653, 61, 62. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Exactly. This is saying, this saying is hard, but who can hear it? Jesus, knowing in himself 
that his disciples murmured at this and said, Does this scandalize you? I don't think the word scandalize is in the Bible, but I'll look. But I agree. Well, the reason that it was hard for them to grasp is because there are some people that obviously hear that and think cannibalism. But that's not what he's talking about. That's why it's hard to hear. That's why they were murmuring about it. They figured it out, though, when they all partook in the ritual at the Last Supper, when he clearly said, this is what we're doing. Do this in remembrance of me, which we will be doing here on this channel Tuesday night, so you're all welcome to come join us, if you so dare. Jack Russells are a wild breed, says Amanda. They need lots of exercise. Well, that's because they're hyperactive and they never stop jittering all over the place. Christian says, verse 52 in the Protestant versions, I mismatched the verse numbering there. I hear you, buddy. Well, we use the King James version here and nothing else. That's why I didn't recognize the quote, but I understand you. Amanda says, till you get around their nest. Hmm. Yep. That's what it was. A croc, says April. Well, a crocodile and an alligator are not the same thing. Crocodiles do eat people. They do eat anything that moves. Alligators generally won't. They have bitten people before, and maybe one or two of them have eaten somebody. Not usually, though. Richard, Amanda talking over the chat, taking over the chat, huh? Now nah, she's uh got a wrench. It's her job to take over the chat, Richard. Amanda says, hi, Richard. And April says, hi, Richard. How are you today? Good to see you. Richard says, I'm peeking in only peeking. Well, peek, peek. Come visit. Just blatantly be out here. Whatever you want to do. Cool, says April. Cold Creek Croft says, a bit behind, but on the dogs. Bees, two cattle dogs, showed up and busted through the screens on the barn door and was after the rat instantly. Maybe they know what his diabolical plan is. Have you not seen Ren and Snippy? April says, the J-Tag. Hit the J-Tag, says April. Hit that J-Tag. That's right. <laughs> Join the show. Hit that J-Tag. Be like April and have a J-Tag. I'll be up till around 12 or so. Have to pick up the girls from work. Okay, buddy. I'll give you a call as soon as I'm done here, okay? April says, I don't like those glue strips. My, my chat keeps freezing up, so y'all bear with me. I'm getting there. I don't like those glue strips they make for rats. That's just torturing. I agree. I prefer the old-style snap-type straps because they're instant and they work very quickly. And it's tried and true. It's gruesome, but it works. And uh, it's much, much, much more humane than those go-in-one-way-and-can't-get-out traps or those glue traps where they get stuck and just have to starve to death because they can't get out. And I don't like that at all. I'd much rather break a neck or a leg and get it over with quickly. Because they have to die. They can't live in my house. But they don't have to die horribly. Amanda says, yes, April. And Walter says, and by the way, there's no such thing as a better mousetrap. A mousetrap is a mousetrap is a mousetrap, period. No such thing as a better one. Walter Davis says, the squeak might be the alternator. Well, that is not a deal breaker. The running part is the deal breaker. You know, we got to have it running, but I don't care about the squeak. We'll make that work. I'll replace everything on it if I got to. It just needs to roll forward. Get me there. And get me back to North Carolina. Now, I'll come after it. I promise. April says, shift shaper ug. Shape shifter? What are you saying? 
Hmm. Caucasian Sasquatch. What's up, buddy? He says, that went very well. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. I enjoyed it. Amanda says, hi, Caucasian. Come on now. All right, we're back. We had a few jacks. They are great if you train them. Jack Russell Terrier, says Walter. <coughs> John 6, verse 66 and 67, says Christian. After this, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then Jesus said to the twelve, you will also go away. Notice Jesus is not saying he was speaking symbolically. Notice he didn't have to because what he did was symbolic. Yes, alligator nest. I got it. Caucasian says, Walter. April says, hello, Caucasian. Good to see you. Christian, that's very deep, but please tell me what you're trying to get to because I'm my imagination is running wild over here and... I'm not good at taking other people's points. So tell me what your point is and then back it up with your uh, scriptural evidence because we're at a disconnect here and I think you're talking about one thing and you might be talking about something else and I don't want to go down that road and falsely correct you. <coughs> so tell me what the point is here, Christian. <laughs> Caucasian says, I love the suit. Thank you. I appreciate that. Me too. Amanda says, I agree, Caucasian. It looks good on him. They're talking about my new members only show, The Hyper Bowl. If you're a member, you get to watch it. Or, you know, if you follow Caucasian Sasquatch. Cold Creek Croft says, Honestly, one of the fiercest beasts I have ever encountered was a possum that somehow got in my window and fell, trapped in, in a cardboard box. That that was in... Yeah, I gotta wait. There we go. That was in Kansas, but that thing was ready to fight. I have faced off against a possum, and I can tell you they are tough as nails, and they don't go down easy. I had to whack one up with a machete to get it to die. And throw a speaker on top of it. Colt Creek Croft says Caucasian. April says, yes, we have the power of the wrench, says April. Absolutely. Colt Creek Croft says, Sasquatch. Squatcho, yo. Uh, uh, Sasquatch says Amanda, April. LOL, April says Amanda. My chat keeps jumping big time. Uh, that went, I went too far. Hey. The glue traps, says Amanda, makes the fight till their death sad. Yes, it does. All right, last time, Christian. Give me the point. Because I'm 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 getting a little frustrated at reading scriptures that are not in Psalms, which is what we're studying tonight. And I don't know what you're getting at, so help me out here. After this, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then Jesus said to the twelve, You will also go. I read this one already. Okay, I'll take back what I just said. Why? I went too far. That's what it is. I'm yelling at people that don't even deserve to be yelled at. Nope. There's another one. I, I, I yelled correctly. I just read the wrong one. Okay. John 6, 6, 8 says, And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the world. Thou hast the words of eternal life. St. Peter 
who would become the first pope, wrong, speaks for the apostles and the whole church. Well, first of all, Peter was not a saint. Peter was a fisherman. Second of all, God called Peter the rock, meaning the rock of the foundation of his church, meaning the people that follow the teachings of Christ. The Catholic Church does not follow the teachings of Christ. So they lied. St. Peter's Basilica did not belong to St. Peter, and if it did, they took it over when he died. He didn't have anything to do with that. That's not what Jesus set him out to do. And if he did do that, he didn't do what Jesus wanted him to do. What Jesus wanted him to do was bring together the Jews and the Gentiles into one place that could learn about him. That's it. This whole Mary business and all of that, none of that, saints, none of that is in Christ's teachings. None of it. So that's incorrect. But where shall they go, he asked. Well, where he went was to the Catholics. That's not where Jesus told him he was going to go. If you'll read your own scripture, you'll see that what he's saying is correct. Walter Davis says, I used to run a farm for a 90-year-old lady. One day she tells me there's a possum eating the cat food and hit with a broom and killed it. So she put it in a garbage can. Oh, Jesus Christ, you did not kill that possum with a broom. That thing came alive and tried to kill you, didn't it? Cole Cross says, I found an old bait trap in the loft when I got here with a mummified bat and two bull snakes that went in after it and didn't get out. Gruesome. I broke it in half so it wouldn't repeat. Oof, terrifying. <coughs> I looked in the can, says Walter, and it looked back at me. It was just playing possum, so I let it go. Smart move, because a possum will hurt you. They are tough, and they got really sharp teeth and really leathery tails. April says, It makes me sad, even though I don't want them in my house. It's so tragic seeing it. I actually freed a baby one day. Oh, my God, I'm a dork. No, you're not. You're a loving spirit, and that's what God wants you to be. You're not supposed to kill things indiscriminately. <laughs> and Amanda agrees. No, you just have a heart, April. That's right. You can't all be like me. I'll just stomp on them. Real playing possum. Excellent, Walter. Yes, says Cole Greek Croft. April says, they are rats. They can shift shapes. It's weird. Well, they can flatten out. They can't really shift shapes, but they can get in flat spaces that you wouldn't think their bodies could get into. That is true. They're not shape shifters. They're just shape flatteners. They can do that. Like a cockroach can do that, too. Dennis Bigfoot, what's up, my brother? YouTube is garbage tonight. Been watching on my TV, but wouldn't let me find the live with my phone for tens. Well, it has been garbage tonight, but I don't know if it's YouTube or if it's the Internet. I mean, it is Easter weekend, so maybe everybody's homing on the Internet and it's just bogging down. Who knows? Tens of minutes. April says, OMG, I know all about possums, too. I won't get into that, LOL. Oof, terrifying. Were you present during the possum debacle of 1996 or whatever year it was? Because I certainly mutilated one, me and a bunch of boys. And that, I want to tell you, that possum haunted me for 20 years. Every time I walked into that house or into any house, I could smell it. I could smell the blood. It's a very distinctive, bitter odor that you can't get out of your nose. For 20 years, that possum haunted me. So I paid for killing that thing, just so you know. Apparently, God didn't want me to be shy of the knowledge of what I had done. Amanda says, hi, Dennis. April says, hi, Dennis. Good to see you, love. I don't know why everybody's Australian all of a sudden. Good to see you, love. Here's the point. Christian, thank you. The point is that Jesus was literal when he said to eat his flesh 
and would let all of his followers leave him rather than compromise on the truth of literally eating his flesh in the Eucharist. You are incorrect, sir. You have overshot the shark. You jumped it, and you're over it. It was not literal. It was symbolic. Just like all of the parables that he talked about were symbolic of real truths. He used parables so that everyone could understand. And like so, at the Last Supper, he used a parable so that everyone could understand the eating of the flesh. Meaning, in doing so, in remembering Christ, as he said, do this in remembrance of me. First of all, how could you eat flesh of God when nobody found his body because it didn't stay here? He left with his body intact. The body was never found. So you can't eat his flesh. Second of all, if he said, do this in remembrance of me, what does he mean? He means that by remembering him, you are taking him into you, literally, into your spirit. The flesh of God, which is the meaty part of God, which is the works of the words. See, the words are the wine, but the works of the words are the flesh, the meat. And by taking him in and remembering him first, you are partaking of the works of God. You're being part of the system. You are, in fact, internalizing his flesh, only metaphorically. And that's what he meant. And if you don't have the brain to see that, you shouldn't be studying Bible because you're incorrect about that. But never fear, people like me exist, and if you'll stick around, I'll teach you all about what he said. We're getting close to it now. We're in Psalms. We're almost there, and soon we'll be starting the Gospels, which is the good news, and I want you all to hear the good news. It's very important that you understand it. <laughs> but thank you for the comments, and I hope that I cleared that up for you. And if not, I hope it causes you to think a little bit about what your convictions are, if nothing else. Dennis says, hey, Amanda. Hey, April. Foxman, back for another round. I see you didn't hit that join button last time like you said you were going to, but that's okay. It's a free show. You only join if you want to. If you want to support the channel, if you want to help us get to the places we need to go, you can do so by hitting that join button. You can also do, do so by going to paypal.me slash Jake Johnson Band, or if you're a Cash App user, dollar sign Jake Johnson Band. In all those ways, you can help. Or you can super chat, or buy a sticker like April just did, or whatever. That's your help because you want to see the channel succeed, but it is free. You can watch it for free. I won't keep nothing away from you. However, if you are a member, then I will go deeper for the members than I will for this chat. They will hear things in the future that will not be covered on this channel because, quite frankly, you got to be paying attention to understand what I'm going to be talking about. And that's just the way it works. So if you wish to become a member... Become one. If you don't, don't. <coughs> but hello, Fox Man. That's what I meant to say. Hi, Fox, says Amanda. Fox Man says hi. And Walter Davis says, I was raised Catholic. Even went to a Catholic school. I started to question the faith when I asked why no man should come between the Father and us. And we had priests. Hmm. Got a beating for that. Well, Walter... As the word Israel means, transliterated, to wrestle with God, quite literally, if you're not struggling with Christianity, you're not Christianing right. You have to be struggling with it. You have to be pondering on it. You have to be trying to figure out what it means. That's the idea. That means you should question things. And anybody that tells you you should not question things is not being earnest with you. They are leading you astray. Always question everything, especially things that you hear men say, even this one. <sighs> Good for you. April says, Christian, we are children of God. He made us. It doesn't mean to eat him or drink him, his blood. It means follow Jesus. Our souls belong to God, no one else. We all have that's why Jesus died for us. Well spoken. And Walter says, seemed it was agree or get a beating. 
even if you ask legitimate questions on things that contradict it. Yeah, that tends to be what happens when you're involved in cults and they want you to drink the Kool-Aid and you refuse to by doing things like having common sense and higher critical thinking skills. They don't like that very much. Just capitulate and get a badge. Jesus died for our sins, says April. April says, but the... But God, the Father of Jesus, rose again. That was the Passover. That's what the Passover is, sort of. Yes, sort of. The Passover is really about what happened in Egypt, and it's the remembrance of that. And it's the remembrance that God spared those people from the death angel which came through the town. We'll cover all that on Tuesday. I'll explain to you exactly what the Passover is and why they celebrate it every year and why it's so important that they keep it every year and keep it right every year. Their souls depend on it. They meaning the Jewish people, or I say the word Jewish because that's what we know them as. Jew only means tribe of Judah. There's 12 tribes. I mean all the people. They are the chosen ones of God. Judah singled out because it's the king line. Levi is singled out because it's the priest line, two of which relatives of Jesus. So, but Passover is about what happened in Egypt, not what happened at the Last Supper. The Last Supper was commemorating what happened in Egypt. All done by God, yes. So you kind of got that right. OMG, sounds similar to my story. Be ha 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 ha, referring to the possum story. Oh, yeah? I guess we all got a little possum in our back pocket. I can't raise one eyebrow to save my life. I'm trying desperately. It just will not go up there. But every now and then it jumps up there by itself, though, and I have nothing to do with it. Walter says, I was working on a house through the slum rehab program in Newark, New Jersey in the 80s, one day the entire block was shut down by the police. Really? Amanda says, snakes can flatten too. Maybe so. Walter says, seems a raccoon was in a tree in the backyard of a house. I got through and threw a rock and hit it in the face. Raccoon ran away, and I was a local legend. Go figure. Walter, you're a local legend now, buddy. Cold Creek Croft says, snakes can climb, too. That was the, uh, I guess, just another of the jump scares here. Four foot bull snake going after sparrows and stuck in a garden net i reach up for it and a snake fall snake tail falls on my face Ugh. you know what else they can do they can fly in planes too don't believe me ask samuel l jackson he's tired of them snakes on that plane amanda says they can cole i like snakes i used to raise pythons by that, she means she used to own a python or two. Not like she had a snake garden full of pythons. She didn't have a staff of people round a clock caring for pythons and their growth, heaters and everything. She owned a couple of pythons. I used to raise pythons. What's the matter with you? Christian says, there are multiple meanings. You are describing alternate undertones of eating his flesh while denying the literal understanding. I haven't denied anything. I'm flat out telling you there is no literal understanding. That's not a denial. That's a fact-based statement. Read the book. Read it literally. Read it metaphorically, however you wish. He is not telling people to eat his flesh because God don't make mistakes, right? God's perfect, right? The Bible says so all through it, right? 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 How can people eat God's flesh if it's not no flesh here for him them to eat? There's no flesh here. The body transfigured. It was done away with. It no longer exists in heaven or on earth. When Christ comes back, he comes back in spiritual form. That's the white robey thing. 
You're incorrect in your thinking. I'm sorry, you're wrong. I will gladly tell you the right thing, but you have to stick it out and you can't question it when I tell you because I'll show you and then you'll see it. Okay? Now, if you don't see it, you can question it, but you'll see it because I'm pretty good at explaining things. But I've denied nothing about God. No, sir. Cold Creek Cross says, then I had no choice but to gear up, grab it by the head, and took 15 minutes to cut it free with surgical scissors. Oh, the feel of the squirmy thing. But I got him free and consider it my duty. Snake hero you are, Cold Creek Croft. April says, no, no, no. I had one decide to sneak in our house one night, and I had just woke up and saw a shadow moving towards the bedroom, bathroom, and I shrugged it off. Couldn't be what I thought it was. No, mm -mm. Went to the bathroom half asleep and then wait for it. Amanda, uh, April says, hey, man, Jake. Yes, thank you, ma'am. <coughs> the spirit, says April. Yes. Walter says, if the apostles ate his flesh literally, they probably would not be much for the crucifixion. Yeah, if they literally ate him, he wouldn't be alive to be crucified, which was the purpose for him being here. Think about what you're saying. That's all I'm asking. I agree 100%, Walter. Thank you. April says, like breathing, like the wind. You can't see it, but you feel it. Mm -hmm. Cold Creek Croft says, April Rain, pythons. Man, what a woman. With all due respect, I could believe that. In the jungle, but rattlesnakes in trees? No, 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 no. Don't like rattlesnakes that can climb trees. Amanda says, I hear you, Cole. And April says, Fox Man, welcome, hon. Sorry I didn't see you. Welcome. And April says, Amen. And Walter says, Oh, Fox Man. Fox Man, you are popular. I like it. Cole Creek Croft says, <sighs> Chat jumped again. Cold Creek Croft says, Walter raised Catholic too. Was Cold Creek Croft was also raised Catholic. Was forced to ride my bike to confession and recall being so upset as I could not think of anything bad. I had to make something up and literal and likely the day I began asking WTF. Yes. Yeah. When you when you're forced to go to confession and you have nothing that you feel like you should confess about, there's a problem with the program. And I agree with you wholeheartedly there, Cole Greekcroft, and you should be asking, what the hell, man? This ain't right. That's not what God meant. <coughs> also, man cannot forgive you. Only God can forgive you. Man has no say over your judgment. Not this man. Not any man. You are a sovereign human being with free will. The only person that can judge you is God Almighty. Hi, Grandpa, says Colin Hill the middle. Now, Colin, you know I ain't your granddaddy, but thank you. And Amanda says, geez, Colin, he's not a grandpa. I'm not a grandpa. I have kids, but I don't have grandkids. <laughs> And April says, right, yes, you explain it so pleasantly. Thank you, and I hope I hope so. April says, Colin, what's going on? Good to see you. And Cold Creek Croft says, and it made no sense. The priest would randomly have you do this number of prayers, etc., to reconcile them. So I wondered why they couldn't just list them on a paper and let us do it ourselves. Well, they are listed on paper. That paper is called the Bible, and you absolutely can do it yourself. Pick it up and read it. 
And in it, you will see when a Pharisee asked Christ, and he was trying to trip him up. So a Pharisee is like a, a Bible lawyer. They don't believe in God, but they know all about the scriptures, and they like putting it in your face, kind of like other people, like throw scriptures in your face because they know something you don't know, those kind of people. They asked Christ, how should we pray then? And what did Christ say to him? You want to know how to pray? This is how you pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, that covers everything. It covers everything. There's nothing else you need to talk about. That's how you pray. It's very simple. There's no mother may eyes. There's no flagellants. None of that is involved in that. It's just praise God, put his name first, and then thank him for forgiving you, just like you would forgive your neighbor. And that's a different kind of forgiveness. I know I said a minute ago that no one can forgive you but God. I'm talking about forgiving you of the guilt of sin. I'm not talking about forgiving somebody for committing sin. It's a different thing. That won't get you into heaven. I can forgive you for screwing me over. That's not going to save your soul. God can forgive you and it will save your soul. That's what I meant. So, yeah, you can do it yourself, Coco Goft. And you're doing it. Look at how many times you've come back to this. You weren't expecting to join a church chat, and neither were any of you. But here you are. And I am so grateful that you have hung with me this long. I am so thankful that you people are listening to my words. I'll give you everything I got. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I do. I'll give it all to you. Because that's what God put me here to do. Answer these kind of questions. I have the answer. I'll gladly give it to you. And there you go. Colin Hill, the middle says, nothing, April, but my dog is now running around after being shot yesterday. Imagine that. Day before yesterday. And Dennis Bigfoot says, the confession seems like a man-invented thing because men are corrupt. Dennis, you couldn't be further from... Uh, that's the wrong way to say this. I, I, you couldn't be more spot on. That's what I was trying to say started to come out the other way, but I meant the other thing. So what I'm saying is, yes, confession was invented to sell forgiveness. You see, if you get them going to a box and confessing their sins, when they either go in or come out, you can be there with a coin collector. A little bit of this. Don't take much. You can get three Hail Marys for 50 bucks or whatever it is. Who knows? Go buy your little beads over there. Pay for this. Pay for that. Give alms to the poor, which never seem to make it to the poor because they're in that chest over there in the corner. Yes, that is what. There's a reason the Vatican exists. It's a country unto itself. It has no extradition laws. It is its own thing. Nobody leads the Vatican except the Vatican. And it has its own army. It's a little army. They're funnily dressed, but they are there. There's a reason for that. Because they're rich. How do they get so rich? By taking advantage of the earnest conviction of the Christian. That's how. I'm sorry. Churches do it too. It's not just the Catholics. Look at T.D. Jakes and Kenneth Copeland's of the world. I will confer and compress, Jesus, if you'll just send me a thousand dollars. Yes, Jesus wants you to buy a t-shirt. Don't you want to buy a t-shirt? Mm -mm. Not this guy. <clears throat> I tell you up front what the money's for, if you should see fit to give it, because that's what it's for. And if you read the Bible, the Bible backs me up on it, and I show it to you every time I come across it, and I'm not looking for it. It's just there, because it is part of the thing. But it's part of the thing to make the church a reality because churches cost money to run. As you see, I'm having trouble with my internet. That's what that money's for. Period. It's not for God. God doesn't need your money. 
but he does tell you to give it if you have it. If God has been good to you, you should be good back to God. In metaphorically, that's true. But what does he say? He says, go into a town and knock on the first door you come to and tell them why you're here and who sent you. And if they receive you, that means they'll give you a place to stay and feed you and give you some walking around money. If they say no, we're not interested. Kick the dirt off of your feet and walk on to the next town. Don't even go into that town for the whole town is lost. That's what the Bible says. That's in the Bible. What's he talking about? He's talking about people teaching the word of God to other people. That's what their job is, is to go teach. Well, in order to teach, you have to know. In order to know, you have to study. In order to study, you have to spend lots and lots of time like this. Who's going to feed you? You are. That's how it works. I do the work. You get the benefit. I get the food. Very simple. It's a simple transaction. Should you choose it? It is not a requirement. This is a free show. So I hope that helps. But yes, you should absolutely understand that most religions, and that's the problem with Christianity is religion, most religions are there to make money. They are businesses, period. Simple, proper, that's the way it is. April says, hmm... The possum was in my bathroom. I was peeing and it jumped up and still peeing, running out the room. OMG. That is an image I did not want in my brain, April. Thank you. Amanda said, I had five Burmese pythons and three ball pythons at one time. Was that before or after the two that I'm aware of? Either way, that's seven snakes. Walter says, Montana, if you were in the mafia, you just had to donate money instead of confession. Well, yes, yes. Do priests and such confess? I don't know. If they confess, I'm sure they do. But you know how to confess? What the Bible says to do is to go into your room and shut the door. It says go into your closet, but meaning it means go into a private space. Shut the door behind you. Get on your hands and knees and speak with your mouth to God and confess what you've done wrong. That means you have to think about it. That means you have to have higher critical thinking skills and see the error of your way. If you're not thinking about it, you're not confessing it. So that's what it says, to do it in private between you and God. It doesn't say to do it in public. In fact, it talks about against that. Don't do it in public. Don't be all pious and let everybody see you praying and let everybody see you giving alms to the poor so that you look good. That's not what prayer is about. It's about your connection with God. It's private. It has nothing to do with anybody else, which is why they use a box. But still, that's the only thing they got right about that. The, there's no priest necessary. You can talk to God yourself. That's why Christ died on the cross to give you that opportunity. <laughs> April says, oh, that's good, Colin. I'm happy the dog is better. I love dogs. I miss my precious. Dog, not ring. Amanda says, the Bible is not just a book, Richard. Did I miss one? I think I might have missed one. I apologize, Richard, if I didn't see your chat. Please write it again because my chat's freezing up and I'm missing things. April says, exactly. Walter Davis says, Dennis, yeah, priests, they uh, confess to bishops. To whoever. And in the end, all the sin. Uh, my chat just jumped. Hang on. All the sin is on the shoulders of the Pope, which is why he is so important. Okay, Pope is papal, that's what it stands for, but he calls himself vicar, which means instead of, right? There's another word for instead of Christ. He is the vicar of Christ. He is instead of Christ. There's another word that describes that. It's called anti, anti-Christ. You follow me? Dennis says, how old is Cold Creek Croft? I have no idea. 227,556 years old, 0.7. I'm guessing. April says, yes, 
You have been led into confusion, Christian. Love, Jake, can explain it all righty. I'm working on it. Lisa Reen says, oopsie, my last message was three words too long. Oh, well, my bad. Well, what did it say? I want to know. Richard says, here, Florida, those disgusting snakes are killed daily. Yes, they are. But it's because they were mishandled by people who raised snakes, and they were let out into the wild when they could no longer raise those snakes, and now they are spreading like wildfire because there's no natural predator for those raised snakes in Florida. So now they are freaking everywhere snakes. It's a good thing that doesn't happen to tigers in Texas. Amanda says, what area are you in in Florida, Richard? Foxman says, it's okay. I'm just hiding in the back. Well, come on, Fox. Join, up, join, join, the, join the chat. Walter Davis says, there is no kingdom of God on earth. WTF is the Vatican City with the Pope as king. I don't know. I don't know. But I can tell you that ain't right. That ain't the way God intended it. And also, if you actually go to the Vatican, there is a whole lot of idolatry happening within those city walls. A whole lot. There are all kinds of false idols and statues of all kinds there. God don't like that. It's commandment number one for a reason. It's commandment number two for a reason. God don't like that. Stop it. Knock it off. Richard says, Mount Dora, Lake County. Mount Dora. <laughs> I know somebody that's from that area, Richard. Dora. Am I right? I think I'm right. Kevin? Walter Davis says, anyway, I'm not anti-Catholic. Just questions that were never answered without a beating. Well, Walter, I will answer every single one of those questions for you. You just ask, and I promise I won't beat you even once. Amanda says, I'm in central Florida, Richard. There's a lot of us in Florida, Richard. Not me, but a lot of my people are in Florida. April says, Richard, here's your channel. And Richard said, what town, Amanda? Well, that's being specific there, buddy. We don't want to get too specific. Foxman, here's your channel, says April. Everybody give them some love, and if they are worthy of being followed... Follow them, too. Amanda says, I'm in Polk County. That ought to tell you. And who is this channel? Yamaholic? Oh, that's uh, Yarnaholic. That's uh, Lisa Reen. Here's your channel. By the way, hang on. Lisa Reen, are you into making yarn thingies? You know how to make yarn stuff? Because you are a yarnaholic. Richard says, I'm in central Florida, 40 minutes northwest of Orlando. Northwest. Northwest of Orlando. Well, I don't know where Orlando's at because they moved it, but I'm guessing somewhere towards Lakeland. Or Plant City, maybe. Walter Davis, here's your channel. Amanda, here's your channel. Go check out Amanda's channel. She's got some pretty nifty stuff on her channel. She has a JTAG. Amanda says, I'm west of Orlando. Richard says, Fort Meade, Pilk County. I played at a place in Florida one time called Pilk's Place. And it was a, a punk rock bar where people had like mohawks and chains in their noses and stuff. And I'm a country band wearing a cowboy hat and a bright shirt. And we played there. And it was quite an interesting night. Total, total bomb of a night. But I remember it to this day. Pilk's Place, somewhere in Florida. 
If you happen to know where that's at and it's still standing, go by there and throw an egg at it or something. Or just go in and buy a beer and say thank you. You put a lasting memory in his mind. And April says, yes, amen. And Amanda says, thanks, April. <coughs> and Amanda says, yep, that area. Cold Creek Cross says, I have good friends that now go to Florida each winter. Somewhere central. Town name is Florida. Which is supposed to be a courtesy. I think they might be lying to you. I don't think there is a Florida, Florida, but I might be wrong. There are weird things in Florida. April says, Richard, not too far away. Cool. I sub to you and also Foxman. See, you already gained something by being here. Congratulations. And April says, Cold Creek Croft, here's your channel. I'm already over time. I need to get to the bottom of this pretty quick. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Walter Davis says, if you know the sin, you have control over the person. Easy to keep people in line if you know how to expose them. Well, that's what the Epsteins of the world and the uh, Puff Daddy Sean Combses of the world are doing. And, you know, when they, they, they accused Sean Combs of uh, some pretty nasty things and he got on an airplane and left, my only question is, did he do it? Dennis Bigfoot says, I'm thinking more along the lines of a gossip info harvest for those in charge of the church. Could be, yeah. You might be right there, Dennis. I don't know whose channel that is. There's no name. But here's your channel. Cold, Cold, uh, Cold Creek Croft says, Oh yeah, April. Take this, April Rain. Here's your channel. Da, 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 da. It's like an inception going on here. Channel inception. Here's your channel. Here's your channel. Here's your channel. Channel, 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 channel. I've lost my mind. Amanda says, yeah, Cole, that's a small town here. There is a Florida, Florida. I stand corrected, sir. Congratulations. You're the first one to ever do it. That's probably not true, but I wouldn't admit it if it were. April says, I put links in the chat if anyone wants to sub already. Yes, please show all of our subscribers some love. And if you find their uh, content worthy, please subscribe to their channels as well. That's why we're here to grow a community. And we want everybody to be able to reach everybody. So get with it. And thank you. April says, I got it, MVTV. Woohoo. And Cold Creek Croft says, they really love it. An older trailer court. But solid people. One day I'll visit once I get over the gator thing, which will be when I get a suit of armor. Well, gators, like I said, usually won't bother you, but you know. And they're not on every street corner. I mean, occasionally you might not see one. They're pretty prevalent in Florida, but not as bad as a uh, tornado. Dennis says blackmail and insider trading by the church. Sounds like something a man would do or could do. I agree, Dennis. And a lot of that has happened. Yeah, look into the uh, the Bank of Italy. Some of that was going on, for sure. Hell's bells, says April. I hope not. Walter says, in the Middle Ages, the Catholic Church was meta. Everything about you, they knew. Mm-hmm. Everything about you, they knew. Yes. And in the B.C. ages, they were called the Sanhedrin. You know, the high priest Caiaphas, same religion, just morphed into Catholicism. And there is a distinction between Catholicism and Roman Catholicism, which is a different thing. But that's all I know about it, because I don't go down that road. <laughs> Whoa. Come on, chat. Quit being so hard to get along with.
Cole says, if there can be PDF files in the church, then average grift doesn't sound too unusual. Trust no one but yourself. And I'm guessing by PDF file, you don't mean a small document that's openable by Windows machines. And they have lots of those in those churches for a reason. Because it's a corrupt, crooked organization that hides criminals instead of nailing them to the metaphorical cross, as it were. Amanda says, LOL, Cole, the gators are not bad or mean, like everyone makes them to be, makes them out to be. And April says, there there were lots of witchcraft and gods in those times, lowercase g gods, yes. Yes, there were. And there still are, by the way. Don't believe me? Look into Bohemian Grove and see what they get up to there. You can find that on Google. That's one place. Look into spirit cooking. That's another thing you can look into that happened this decade. <coughs> Amanda, Amanda says, after the two... Hmm. Sandman, welcome to the show. What Bible says that? All of them. The good ones, anyway. What are you talking about? Says what? What Bible says what? If I said it, it came out of the King James Version Bible. Cold Creek Croft says, yeah, Amanda, HBJ. But it's like getting to a glacier at first. It's like getting to glacier at first. You think there's a grizz behind every tree ready to eat you up. And it takes time to realize that it's different. Yes. Except there are grizzly bears behind every tree ready to eat you up in the glacier. But that's why I live in North Carolina, where they only have brown bears. Amanda says, true, Cole. Hang on, my chat froze up again. I'm getting there. I may never make it to the bottom. Mm. Boy, it jumped a long ways that that time. Amanda says, true, Cole. I was raised around them, so they are just another animal. April says, Sandman, welcome. And Cole Creek Croft says, Dennis, Dennis missed your question earlier if you were talking about me. I'm 64, rather, and rather surprised. When did that happen? I still run around the tennis, I still run around in tennis shoes and feel the same as the last decades. I hear you, brother, me too. And every now and then I catch myself feeling like I'm 15, but I am not 15. And my knees let me know every day that I am not 15. Sam says, what church is older than the Catholic church? Um, the church of Christ. April says, H. Don't talk like that. Dennis says, not Cold Creek Croft, but CC. Well, who's CC? I don't know who CC is. And I can barely see the chat, so I probably misread that because I'm probably seeing double. April says, sorry, accident. That's all right. Accidents happen. Just wipe up and keep moving. Cold Creek Croft says, Sandman. Probably hard probably hard to say i think it more or less developed over time well it did the catholic church it did develop over time but it started as the sanhedrin and somewhere after peter it became the catholic church i don't know exactly when that occurred but it was in that time frame somewhere after the life of peter now i think they used peter to establish their church because peter was already dead when they began so Christ even said, many will come in my name, 
but I won't be there. So don't go there. If you hear that I'm in the desert, if you hear if I'm in the wilderness, don't go there. When I come back, every eye will see and every knee will bow. There will be no mistaking it when I'm back. Sandman says, can you define what an idol is? Sure. Anything that you bow down to to worship is an idol. Anything. It doesn't have any specific meaning. It is what you put your worship in. If you worship it, it's an idol. If it's your money or your bass boat or your house, if you worship that over God, it's an idol. Simple. I hope that helps. Don't worship things that aren't God. Don't even bow down to a cross. That's not God. He doesn't do that. There is no image of God because he doesn't want them to have images of God. Walter Davis says, The Eastern Orthodox Church is older the Ethiopian church is probably the oldest existing church. If you're talking about modern Christianity, yes, the Ethiopian church is probably the oldest, but religion goes back way further than Christianity. Christianity is a modern sect of Judeo belief systems. Okay? So the, the, the separation happens at Jesus. You see, it even was amongst his disciples. James was Jesus' brother. He taught Orthodox Christianity. He taught to the Jews, which meant he talked about circumcision, and he talked about all of the little rituals that they go through and all that stuff. But Paul, who Christ himself set on the task, taught to the Gentiles who are not Jewish. And I use the term Jewish very loosely. I'm talking about all those people from the 12 tribes. I don't mean just the tribe of Judah. <laughs> I'm using it for the sake of simplicity. But Paul taught circumcision of the heart. So Jesus didn't stop James from teaching, but he did add Paul because of the Samaritan. Remember the story of the Good Samaritan? One of the things that she spoke to Jesus after the well incident, she was with them, and she said, Master, even the dogs get scraps from the master's table because Jesus was saying, this is just for the Jews. This is just for the Jewish people. And she changed his mind. Right then, he changed the way he did things because she was right. Even the dogs get scraps from the table of the master. And we are the dogs, the Gentiles. We are not the pure blood of Abraham. We are mixed breeds. We're mutts. But there's a place for us too. And there he sat on the teaching of the circumcision of the heart through Paul. So James went and he taught the Jews, and Paul went and he taught the Gentiles. And you see which one is most prominently featured in the Bible, because there's more of us than there are of them. So it needs to be said more about. So there you go. I hope that helps. April says, idols is someone or something you love more than God. Well, more specifically, you have to worship it. But don't love anything more than God. And Lisa Reen says, anything you hold is higher than God is an idol. It's idolatry, correct. Walter says, the Greek Orthodox was established by the disciples. Mm, some of it. I can't say you're wrong about that because they did go about setting up churches. Paul set up a lot of churches. A lot of his letters in... Uh, uh, Thessalonians and uh, Second Thessalonians and all that, all those letters were going to churches that he established. He went from town to town to town to town establishing churches. So you are right about that. But the, each disciple did it his own thing in a certain way, right? They weren't all together on one church. They went out, spread out, and spread the word. A lot of what John of Patmos wrote, whom was a disciple, uh, ended up in Revelations and in, you know, different places. So um, that was his cont contribution. He wasn't actually setting up churches, but Paul and some of his ilk were. And so was James setting up churches in Jerusalem. And like I said, James was Jesus' brother. So you'd think he thought that he was going to inherit the, the ministry when Jesus died. I don't know if he thought that or not, but I would say that's how brothers act. And so him and Paul were at each other's head. They were at loggerheads for a while. They did not get along. <clears throat> they ultimately are teaching two completely different things under Christ. 
Well, what did Christ say? If they're not against us, then they're for us. Leave them alone. Let them do their thing. It ain't got to be exactly this. It just has to follow these exact rules. That's all. Maybe that makes sense. April says, only one God. We should all idolize our Father, period. Well, we should not idolize him, but we should worship him wholeheartedly, yes. To idolize him would mean to build an idol of him, and he doesn't like that. Commandment number one for a reason. Come on now. It went too far. You moved him too far. Lisa Reen says, I read that one. Amanda says, LOL, didn't move Orlando, silly. Yes, they did. I'm telling you they did. I was there. I remember where it is. I could drive straight to it. However, it's not there anymore. They moved it. Had to. Venice says, hi. Hi, Venice. Welcome to the show. Sandman says he doesn't want to answer, does he? I did answer. What are you talking about? I not only did answer, I answered in detail. What do you want? You want me to say what you believe? You're wrong. I'm sorry. I guess. Let him get there, Sandman. What am I supposed to be answering? I answered everything you said. If if I missed a question, I apologize. Retype it. I'll answer it. I'm going to go till I get to the bottom of the chat. Lisa Reen says, I make things with yarn every day. Well, Lisa Reen, I need one of these. That fits my head. And I like that color. See how that's wrong? It's it's wonky jawed. It doesn't it's not uniform. Can you make one of those? I have a big head, by the way. But it's it's flat on one side and the pattern, I don't know if you can see this on camera. The pattern doesn't complete properly. My mom made it before she died, and I, I cherish this hat, but it's ugly. And I want one that works. So you think you might can fix that? I'd love you forever. Then it says, he ain't reading it as it's written, Sandman. Yeah, are you talking about the chat? Yeah, I'm not reading it the moment you say it. I have to get to it. Amanda says, hi, Venice. April says, Sandman, here's your channel. If you find anything that's worthy of following on Sandman's channel, please do support him. We are trying to build a community here so everybody can reach everybody, and I appreciate each one of you for taking the time to do it. Sandman says, okay. All right. I think maybe he just didn't get that I was not caught up yet. All right. Walter says, Jake, you ever play at Billy Bob's in Dallas? No, but I'd love to. It's a nice place. I've got some videos of it, though, but I've never actually got to play there yet. Hello, Venice, and welcome, says April. There is a Lord of Florida, Jake. Lord, Lordy mercy. Lordy, Lordy mercy. Sandman says, scroll delay. Yeah, it's pretty bad. April says, Venice, I'm sorry. It's a typo. Oh, Vines. I see what you did. Mm -hmm. Walter Davis says, my first wife and I went there one night. She got so wasted. And I don't think she ever drank again. Wow. Oh, at Billy Bob's. I was thinking, well, is that all you do in Florida, Florida, is get wasted? But you meant Billy Bob's. Yeah. It's a great place. It's got a great stage, and I'd love to play there. I just don't play out that far. So maybe one day I'll get there. April says, ha, 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 Walter. Sandman says, thou hypocrite first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Kind of sort of what it says. That's not quite, but you're right. I believe that's what I'm talking about. I'm not a hypocrite. I probably am a hypocrite, but not you. Walters says, April, true story. I think she was hungover for a week. I have been hungover for a week. My 25th birthday, I drank... A lot of double shots of tequila because everybody in the bar bought me a shot, a double shot. And I was so drunk 
that I had alcohol poisoning and I was staying on my bathroom floor for about a week and I thought I was going to die. So I understand that. That will, and I hadn't drank since really. I mean, I drank a little bit every, every now and then, but <laughs> not like I was drinking then for sure. Truth will prevail, says April. Yes, ma'am. As the world burns, turns, as the world turns. <laughs> So are the days of our lives, April. <laughs> and April says, and these are the days of our lives. Yeah, great minds think alike. Amanda says, LOL, as the stomach turns, maybe. <laughs> April says, yes, space balls. When Pizza the Hut ate himself to death. Or else Pizza will come out for you. Great movie. <laughs> Walter says, like sands through the hourglass. And Amanda says, great movie, April. And April says, ha, 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 ha. I think I might be near the bottom. My chat froze up again. Oh, there we go. Yes, what I concur, says April. And Amanda says, here's the uh, Untethered Live Facebook page. Check that out. Amanda says, I mean, I agree. Walter says, Catholics became Sandman. Catholic became Sandman. That's some deep Spider-Man mess right there. April says, spreading the love for you all over the world. Now sing it, Jake. We are the world. We are the children. We are the ones that make a brighter place. So let's start giving. Dang, I respect Jake. Always plowing through all the chat. After the reading. Oh. Oh. After the reading with scroll hassles and likely having to wake up to a damn alarm. It seems late now, but I am two hours ahead. Ah, retirement. Yes, I do have to get up early and go to work, but that's all right. And I thank you for the respect, and I appreciate that. And that respect is returned and is reciprocated, my friend. Fox says, "Have you tried washing that hat in hot water? It may shrink. It probably will, but it, that won't fix the fact that it's uneven as all get out." My mom wasn't a very good sewer; she was just learning how to do it. And I love the hat because she gave it to me, but fits kind of wonky. And yes. Uh, washing it would probably shrink it to where it would fit tighter on my head, but it would still be crooked. Like half of it hangs over my ear and the other half goes across. And if I turn it around and I got a big dip in the front, <laughs> it's kind of funny. But I love my mom, so there you go. April said, that's what I meant. I love Elvis Presley. I can dot, dot, dot. Come on, Jet. Give it to me. I can honestly say I'm obsessed, but he's in heaven now, and his spirit is still rocking the whole world today. Woohoo! Lisa Reen says, I can make that hat in one day. I could fix that one to be tighter, but the yarn wouldn't match. Measure your head for me, and you got it. Thank you very much. And I do have a tape around here somewhere. I'll, I'll hook you up. And thank you. Thank you very much. That would be lovely. April says, I've been into tequila also. OMG Jinx, Jake. Me too. I don't know. I didn't know that happened to you. The same thing happened to me. Getting drunk on your 25th birthday. We might have been at the same bar. I don't know. It was rough, though. I promise you that. I was very ill. And my girlfriend... At the time, all right, picture this. I remember walking towards the door thinking if I could just make it out the door without stumbling, I'll be okay. I don't want everybody to know how drunk I am. And I made it. I got out the door and I walked right into the wall. And then I slid down the wall to the end of the building where I remained for the next two and a half hours throwing my guts up behind the air conditioner while everybody left the bar watching me yakking my brains out as they walked by. 
Then my girlfriend gets me in the car and I'm hanging out the window, still throwing up and not wanting her to move because the world is doing this. And she decides to drive off. And what does she do? She stops for ice cream. Now, I don't know. It was like two o'clock and three o'clock in the morning. I don't know where she found ice cream being sold, but she stopped, got out of the car, went in for like 45 minutes, eat ice cream while I stayed outside yakking my brains out in a parking lot for everybody to see under a big bright light. So everybody saw it. Got me home, walked me up the steps to our apartment, which was two flights up. So it was a long crawl trying to keep me from falling back down the steps. Got me into the house. And I was taken to the bathroom where I collapsed on the floor. And that's where I stayed for a week. I never left that bathroom for a week. Hugging that toilet. Throwing my guts up. Green bile and just everything in me. Every kind of evil you can think of came out of me in that week. And I was in and out of consciousness. I had alcohol poisoning. I'm sure I came that close to dying. But then one day I woke up and everything was okay. So I got up and washed myself off and went to bed. And I never got that drunk again in my life, ever. That was it. That's what taught me. That ain't for you, Jake. The Guiding Light. Aha, I remember that one, says April. All right. Walter Davis says, I have some kind of weird genetics. I don't get hangovers. My father didn't either. My son takes after his mother. <laughs> That's cool. Amanda says, General Hospital, ugh, soap operas. One life to live and all my children. Nope. The song by Kenny Chesney, says uh, April. Walter says, April, young? April is the same age as me, pretty much. Oh, yeah, I remember that, Amanda. Or are you talking about the name of the song, Young? I don't know. Love all Kenny songs. Woohoo. All right. That's it. I'm pretty sure I'm at the bottom. All right. Thank you all so much for being here. I love each and every one of you. May God bless all of your lives. May he guide you as you go into the world with his grace. And may his love light the footsteps everywhere you go. Take care of yourselves and each other. Hey, when you go out in the world tomorrow, be nice to somebody. Do that for me. Would you do that? Just be nice. You ain't got to do nothing special. Just be nice and watch it come back to you. I promise you it will. Now, hit that join button if you so desire. Like, subscribe, share, and support. And I'll see you guys tomorrow night right here on Untethered Live. Maybe we can get through a show without it crapping out on us. Have a great night. God bless you all. Take care of yourselves. Thanks for watching.